Well, as the saying goes, what's old is new again, and there's a store in Plymouth that keeps that mantra alive. So much so that they needed to expand their store and move into a larger location. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> So joining us uh, to give us the details are Matt and Cami Mai of Finders Keepers Vintage and Vinyl. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having us. It's Appreciate exciting it. to have you guys here. So I had the pleasure of visiting your store several years back and doing a story there, but a lot has changed. Tell us about the expansion. Well, um, it was a matter of a little bit of necessity and a little bit of finding a perfect home. Mm -hmm. um, our lease was coming to an end. We could have extended, but we walked into this building and Cami said, this is home. Like, it was unbelievable. I said, well, wait, wait, let's mm -hmm. make the numbers work. But anyway, it turns out we're there. We have a thousand more square feet than we used to have. Um, no looking back. It's just no where back. we're supposed to be, you know? Well, so I'm assuming that there was already a passion there, but what inspired you to do vintage, you know, clothing plus vinyl? Because often you don't see those two things together. That's true. Well, that's where I come in. Mm -hmm. uh, vintage has always been a part of my life since I was a small child. Uh -huh. And when we first initially opened the vintage store almost 13 years ago, we records weren't really a thing yet. They were just starting to become more popular. And we spent a lot of our time going out to look for things for the store. And I needed something that Matt could connect with. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we were going out to look, he could have something yeah. that he had passion with. And so we decided, yes. let's start the records. And the record selection actually just started out with a couple crates. And then as the years evolved, our record selection evolved. And today I would consider us having a a reasonably full-blown record store yeah. within a vintage store. That is very cool. So. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, what can people expect when they come and visit your store? Because you don't do any online sales, so when pe you know, people have to come in to get that full experience. Yes, you said it. We want them to have an experience. Um, because we don't sell online or ship, you have to come and see it. Um, and what you'll find is a lot of unique things that other stores do sell, but they typically sell online, so they're not necessarily in their store. High-end records will stay around in our store for quite a while because it takes a while to get somebody that's going to yeah. spend yeah. two, three thousand dollars on a record. Mm -hmm. Well, so specifically, you have some really great things here. Talk about some of these yeah. highlights. Well, I'm going to just go over some records real quick. Okay. Um, most of our records, I do. I don't order, buy, and sell new records except for some local bands. Okay. Dude, there is a friend of mine, Tony from the Mugs. That's his new project. Mm -hmm. I kind of did a shout out to some of the local groups yeah. today. Seduce. Nice. Chris Plum is a, a Plymouth uh, jazz. Um, artist. Uh -huh. Halloween is an older Detroit band from the 80s and then I brought one of my real high-end um, Curtis Fuller albums okay. and jazz. I happened to get a great jazz collection um, about a year ago and it's just been awesome. That's great and of course beautiful bags you know I'm looking at all of this stuff. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so really down cool. at the end uh, there you'll see the little Maxwell house can that's upcycled. I like to Bring do a lot here. of that with yeah. my displays. In that you'll find some di vintage pictures and different things that people use for mm -hmm. scrapbooking, junk journaling. Uh, my vintage hats love hats. Yeah. We have a great selection of vintage hats. There's a 70s patchwork jacket which I purchased from the original owner. And uh, here we have um, a, a pot with a plant on it and the wicker vintage holder, which I love pots. And you can find a, a variety of those in the store. Vintage handbags, yeah. the carpet bags wow. are one of my favorites. Um, just other little vintage decors. We like to focus on having something, someone can come in and spend five, ten dollars to thirty to a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So I like to have little cutesy little knickknacks that people can purchase for under ten dollars. Some more vintage hats, another upcycled uh, container one, here. Nice. And we have a really large wow. collection of vintage jewelry in the store. It's always been one of my passions and uh, that comes from my grandma. She was big into selling vintage jewelry most of my life. And uh, so you have just a yeah. little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. costume jewelry back in the day, way better than new, oh, new yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, it's very Quality true. Is I, I want to buy um, this for 
Tati the succulent pillar. <laughs> I do, right, it has to be not real in order for, for it to be uh, yeah. something that I could take care of. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. So where are you guys located in Plymouth so people can come and visit you? Our uh, new location since February is 900 North Mill Street. Um, that's about two blocks from our old location, which is still in what they consider the old village area, mm -hmm. area of Plymouth, which is about a mile outside of downtown. Um, yeah, we're right at Mill Street and the railroad tracks. Go visit them, you guys. The store is an absolute experience, and now it's even bigger. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Can I add one thing? Sure. Happy birthday, Mom. Oh, You're the best. Oh, yes. Happy birthday, <laughs> Mom. Hey. That's awesome. Love you so much. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you.